for, for Greece, really, Euro, it's becoming like a kind of prison, you know, you cannot escape uh, because you will be killed. But if you, but the, if you stay in the prison, you will, you will suffer for the rest of your life. Pressure is building in Greece ahead of a July deadline to repay seven and a half billion euros. It seems that uh, we're having a long delay in completing the second evaluation, which is definitely very bad for the Greek economy. That second evaluation is key to unlocking another tranche of loans to make the payment. Of primary concern is a 3.5% growth target. The IMF says that won't be possible without the implementation of more austerity measures. No country in the Eurozone can, be, should, can and should be asked to, to produce primary surpluses or more than 3% for, for a period of five, six, seven years. That is impossible to obtain. This, uh, all the, this austerity program since 2010 uh, is made for another planet and for other, other creatures, not people. One thing all politicians in Greece can agree on is that the people have sacrificed enough. Some polls indicate that a majority of Greeks now believe that it was a mistake to join the EU. And with more austerity measures on the table, there are worries that the country's shrinking middle class may be beyond the point of no return. It's been how long now? Nearly 20 years? And it certainly doesn't feel like 20 years. No, it feels like 100 years. A thousand. <laughs> when Aris and Katerina got married, their future was bright. Aris had a construction company, and Katerina worked as a bank manager. Now, their situation is very different. By the end of the day, we are taking 15,000 something from the rents, and we have to pay back about 11,000. So how are we going uh, to live with 4,080 hundreds? You can see your tax statement if you like. Neither can find a job to earn additional income to care for their two children. Nobody wants a guy 53 years old to start from the beginning to work anywhere, even as a delivery guy. There is no middle class anymore. Nothing. There are workers and rich people. Yes. No middle class. Years of austerity measures have not only withered the middle class, but led to a brain drain. I'm afraid that we will create a vacuum in our, in, in our society, which will not only be difficult to fill, but that will destroy our society the way we know it. And you know, when a, a society is being destroyed, the extremes come out. You know, Nazis, the Golden Dawn, who knows what else? There's a strong sense among both politicians and ordinary Greeks that they're being taken advantage of by their EU neighbors. Germany has profited as long as there is no um, solidarity. This union is not sustainable. We're on the Titanic and we are dancing in the same time that the boat goes uh, towards the iceberg. The, problem, the only problem is that some people are on the first class and the, the people in the second class will suffer more. German Foreign Minister Wolfgang Schäuble said in December that Greece would either have to reform or leave the EU. Mr. Schäuble is very honest. He wants a German Europe. Some say it's important to strike a quick deal because it will only get harder as election season in Europe gets underway. But a growing number of Greeks want their government to start asking at what cost must they stay in the EU. They are doing things to keep us in European community without uh, thinking if we are going to exist to be in the European community. Randolph Nogle, the newsmakers in Athens. To discuss this, I'm joined by Georgos Karatsiobanis from Brussels. He's a member of the European Policy Department of Syriza. And from Copenhagen, economist Lars Christensen. He's the founder of Markets and Money Advisory and is a senior fellow at the Adam Smith Institute. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. Georgos, let me start with you. Uh, New York Times op-ed, the Greek bomb in the EU's foundations. The Guardian had a feature. From bad to worse, Greece hurtles towards a financial reckoning, or sorry, a final reckoning, even worse. That sounds apocalyptic, Yorgos. Is it true? Well, we believe that since uh, 2010, this is the first year that the Greek economy is coming into a recovery period. The economic figures are positive after uh, several years of recession, and uh, we have signs of uh, growth 
in the economy of uh, better conditions uh, and better figures in the unemployment uh, rates and uh, figures that are positive for Greece at the moment. Okay, better so, than before. Okay, so last, what's the Eurozone's problem then? Because Yorgos is saying they're doing well. These, these measures are working. Why is the Eurozone saying no more debt relief? Well, you know, it, it is correct that the Greek economy is uh, showing some signs of recovery. Uh, but we, we had negative quarter-to-quarter uh, -quarter growth in, in, in Greece in, in, in the fourth quarter of last year. Uh, this is not a booming economy. But anyway, uh, my real worry is that when the ECB at some point in the next one to two years start to tighten monetary policy because Germany needs it or the Netherlands needs it or France needs it, Greece is very far from having recovered and will be sent down to back to recession quite soon again. Uh, and then we, we in trouble again. I, uh, I wouldn't be uh, as alarmist as some, but, but to me, um, Greece simply isn't the same sa way in, in terms of the economic cycle as, as the northern European countries, and therefore this is simply a country that do not fit into the euro. Jorgos, might it be that the people at this moment in time, if they were given the choice, they'd want a Grexit? Uh, well, this is not an option uh, either for uh, the population or the government, the Greek government. The Grexit scenario that is being put forward by, uh, by the German finance minister, Mr. Schäuble, and others uh, is a scenario similar to the Swedish incident as put by Donald Trump yesterday. It does not exist from the Greek side. It will harm the Greek side, but it will harm also the European Union. It is not a scenario for us. and. Uh, we believe that it's uh, dangerous to have this discussion uh, from the moment it is not on the table. Uh, Jorgos, uh, talking about the German finance minister, Mr. Schäuble, he said anyone who now speaks about debt relief for Greece does not strengthen those who want reforms. What do you think is this problem with, with you and for those who are saying that Greece needs more debt relief? Well, I think it's not just a leftist uh, party in one of the corners of Europe. It has been uh, wider support uh, towards the Greek government. From one side, uh, recognizing the, the improvements and the sacrifices that we have done in the, in the last years. And from the other side, it's quite clear that uh, at this moment, we don't have the luxury of recreating a, a Greek drama, if we can call it like this when uh, all around us we have in the European Union several other big uh, major issues such as Brexit, the situation in the Middle East and, and so on. And uh, it's not a moment and the, a momentum to reopen such a discussion. Jorgos, come July, will you be able to pay your debts? Well, we are optimistic that already from today's Eurogroup meeting uh, there will be a, a first political agreement that could help in the coming weeks uh, in the staff level agreement between the Greek side and the, the institutions to, to go forward and to have finally a conclusion of the second program review. Last, does that sound like a politician trying to sound optimistic and be diplomatic or does it sound like true optimism that, that you can agree with? Well, I, I do actually agree. First of all, I do think that, that we, we need to take uh, steps to uh, r remove some pressure from public finances in Greece. I think the IMF position that, uh, is more right than the EU position, meaning that we need less austerity in the present situation. The problem is, of course, that we cannot continue a situation to transfer taxpayer money from Germany, the Netherlands and, and, and from other countries to Greece forever. Uh, and, uh, and, and that is a very hard discussion. In my, in my view, we need both debt restructuring, a significant write down on debt, uh, of Greek debt, and uh, 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 a euro exit. But I think it's something that needs to be addressed. Instead of we, we have these things where we go one year, two years, and then we are back to the same discussions again. The fundamental problem is that we have a European currency union this is not, which is not optimal. Uh, Greece, uh, Slovakia, Finland, the Netherlands and Germany in the same currency union, it simply does not work. Okay, so Jorgos, why don't you address it? Well, we recognize that from one side the architecture of the monetary union uh, has been uh, done very badly since the beginning. Uh, from the other side, it's uh, clear for us that uh, this 
opening of the chapter Grexit is uh, harmful both uh, for Greece and the European Union. And uh, we believe that this is only a scenario being, being put forward at least in the Greek Parliament by the neo-Nazi uh, gang of Golden Dawn and uh, some other people that support the policy that, be, that uh, drives the policy of Mr. Schäuble and uh, is being supported by some other forces in the Greek Parliament. Mm -hmm. Uh, we believe that at European level it's not an option either for Greece, either for Europe. And uh, we don't need to recreate problems that already uh, had been solved in the past. Okay, so let's we need a that... Europe of solidarity. The... We should remember good point, good point. the principles of solidarity in mm -hmm. Europe. So let's pose that to Lars. Lars, it's only the neo-Nazis of Golden Dawn who are pushing for this. And in a year, when there's elections in countries where the far right are resurgent, in Germany, and in the Netherlands and in France and elsewhere, why do you want to open up this can of worms, Lance? No, no, I completely agree. I'm, I'm deeply worried about uh, right wing extremism uh, 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 gaining ground across Europe, whether it's Le Pen in, uh, in, in France or indeed uh, uh, in what, in my view, is a horrible, horrible political party, Golden Dawn, in, in, in Greece. Uh, in my, the problem is, of course, that these forces are gaining ground exactly because the euro is not working, because we do not have any growth in, in parts of southern Europe and most particularly in Greece. Jorgos, looking at the timeline of Syriza's and the coalition's you know, time in office, two years in office, um, looking at those austerity measures, uh, slashing public sector salaries and pensions, cutting services, agreeing to massive privatization and, and so on, raising taxes. How much of a betrayal to your base and those on the left has this been that it took this left-wing government to do all of this over the past two years? I think that uh, this has been uh, evaluated already by the Greek people uh, a year ago when we had, after the agreement that we signed uh, in July 2015, we had to go to new elections, to anticipated elections, and uh, the support of the population was clear and even higher support for Syriza. Uh, at this moment, we know that the next uh, parliamentary elections will be in 2019. Uh, the support towards the measures and the reforms that have already been uh, uh, implemented in uh, the parliament by the Greek government uh, are in the process of implementation already. Uh, and we believe that there is still, of course, uh, work to be done, but from the other side, we do not forget, and as I said before, that the Greek population has already done a lot of sacrifices, and for this reason, today, uh, in the Eurogroup, uh, from the Greek side, there, we won't accept any new uh, austerity measures yeah. to be on the table. Final question for you, Lars, to build on that point that the, the Greek people have already made a lot of sacrifices, whether we're talking about the IMF, the Eurozone, the Germans, whoever, the Greek government, would you agree that the Greek people have been the ones to suffer throughout this entire process and have been the ones who have carried this burden? Oh, absolutely. I, I, uh, I have again and again uh, on my blog, for example, and my latest blog post is actually called The Continued Suffering of the Greek People. Uh, I, I think the, we are, the euro is a monetary strangulation mechanism that is doing tremendous harm to the Greek economy. And, and the result is social and economic suffering of the Greek people. I can understand that the Greeks are angry. I can also understand that the taxpayers of Germany are angry. Uh, they have been put into this place where they have to uh, bail out Greece again and again and again. Not because of lack of efforts on the Greek government's part or the Greek population, uh, but because of a monetary mechanism that simply do not work. And that's why I, I think we need to address this very fundamental issue. And yes, it will not be easy. There is no easy solution for Greece. Unfortunately, Greece is in the euro. Greece should never have been in the euro. Uh, but, but we cannot keep on postponing this. We are entering the ninth year of depression in the Greek economy. Uh, it is horrendous and has to end. OK, Lars Christensen and Jorgos Karatsiobanas, gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us.